you want to grow the sector, we need to invest in young people and let them come in with the skills that are needed. Hey, Space Watchers. This is Space Cafe Radio, your channel about trends, great people and awesome conferences. My guest in this episode is Kevin Scallion. Kevin is International Trade Specialist for Technology, including space, at the Scottish Development International, an entity of Scottish Enterprise. We met beginning of December 2022 in his office in the beautiful city of Glasgow. From Kevin, I want to learn his view on the local space ecosystem, the opportunities and the challenges. I'm Torsten, publisher of Spacewatch.Global. That is the second episode from my road trip through Scotland, where I met with a number of people from the sector to get an insight what's going on in Scotland. Enjoy the conversation. Kevin, thank you very much for your time. Space is picking up here in Scotland and anywhere else, but here in Scotland especially. What strategy is behind that from the government? So space is seen as a massive opportunity area here in Scotland, both by the economic agencies and the Scottish government. Both are fine within the Scottish context and within the sort of wider UK context. What's interesting is the space sector in Scotland's grown quite organically. There's around 130 companies in Scotland that operate in the space sector, and that's across different verticals of the space sector. So from manufacturing satellites to component parts to defence, it's a mixture of SMEs and larger companies like a Uh, Raytheon, Leonardo, Honeywell Aerospace that have a presence here in Scotland and a lot of other smaller startup companies that are doing some amazing stuff. There's around 8,000 people employed in the space sector in Scotland, which is about 19% of the total of employment in space in the UK. To put that in a context, Scotland's kind of fighting above its weight a little bit. We've got about 10% of the UK population, but 18% of the space jobs. So that's a really interesting position to be in. Um, in terms of a contribution to the economy, space manufacturing and space applications have a real impact in terms of gross value add. And in terms of strategy, we, we see a lot of opportunities in the space sector, both in terms of companies who don't currently sell into space, starting to sell into space, and using space applications and space data to benefit other sectors and other parts of society. Does Scotland has its own space strategy? Yeah, so there's a Scottish space strategy which was launched last year. The strategy kind of sets out the sort of key opportunity areas for the space sector. It also fits within the sort of wider UK context. There's also a UK space strategy. And most of the areas are aligned, but there are some areas in Scotland where we have an advantage for various reasons. For example, there is a strategy around about space ports and vertical launch and there's seven potential spaceports across the UK of which five are in Scotland and all of the vertical launch spaceports are in Scotland and the reason for that is just geography you can launch north of the top of Scotland and it's much less uh, populated and it's th therefore there's much less chance of something going wrong and so the only hurdle on the vertical space launches are then regulations and environmentalists I, I assume Exactly, yeah. When it comes to legislation, when it comes to spaceport applications, and that all sits at the UK level within the Civil Aviation Authority. They are the ones who look after that for the whole of the UK. That is a UK-wide legislation. And environmental concerns, of course, that's always a key thing. We are trying to look at how do we make launch as sustainable as possible. And we're at an advantage because we are starting from nothing. Trying to reverse engineer processes that are already in place For example, to trying to make a spaceport that already exists greener is difficult. When you're building it from scratch, you have the opportunity to do it right from the beginning. So yes, sustainability is a key issue and something that we're looking at in Scotland. And we've launched a sustainable strategy, sustainable space roadmap. What's interesting about the roadmap is it sets out, it sets up goals and milestones and actual action points that we want mm -hmm. to undertake to become sustainable. It's not just a strategy in terms of the high level And what we'd like to achieve it actually sets out goals and, and work packages of how we want to deliver against that. Can you tell us more about the Space Sustainability Roadmap? Yeah. So what's in, what are these milestones? What are the KPIs at the end? So when we talk about sustainability for Scotland, we are looking at three sort of key areas there. We're talking about sustainability in terms of how do you make manufacturing and launch as sustainable as possible? 
how do you not add to the space debris problem and how do you tackle the problem that already exists? And then how can you use space data to benefit Earth and people here on Earth? In terms of that, then that's broken down into sort of work packages. What are the key things that we're wanting to do to get there? The Sustainable Space Roadmap looked at all these different areas and where are we leading the way and how can we make it as green as possible? So it looked at things like for launch, for example, can we use ecofuels and some of the launch vehicles that are that are looking to launch here in Scotland are looking at that. Also took into account spaceports. So obviously you have to build a spaceport. So how do you do that in as sustainable a way as possible? What excites me kind of the most about it is actually the downstream data and how that can help people here on Earth because that has connotations across all other areas of society. So the data can be used to monitor things like ocean levels, icebergs and ice caps and the rise in oceans, forestry, agriculture, lots of different sort of humanitarian problems as well, like the movement of people, piracy. There's so many ways that you can take the data and use it in interesting ways to benefit humankind. And we have a lot of capabilities there in Scotland that can kind of help in that area too. Coming back to the growth of the sector, we see a number of companies, as you said, 130 are here already and a few more are knocking on your doors here as well or settling their spin-outs, the universities or companies from abroad that moving into. So how is the Scottish government supporting that or you just let them come and go and do their stuff? Good question. We see foreign direct investment as a key way to grow the sector here in Scotland, bringing companies in. And we've got some case studies of fantastic companies that have came and decided to set up in Scotland. Government support that in a number of ways. It could be grant funding in terms of helping them set up. There was a large announcement on Mangata who are mm -hmm. setting up operations in Ayrshire and a large amount of money in the millions that the Scottish government have put in there. Part of that's through Scottish Enterprise and part of that's through the Ayrshire Growth Deal, regional economic development funding. But that's all centred around creating jobs and the supply chain opportunities around that and the economic outputs that will come out of the back of that money that has been input by the government. A lot of what we can do as well is just introducing people and helping companies that want to set up here understand why they would want to come and set up in Scotland. So be that understanding, again, if you're a launch vehicle, why would you want to come and launch here and the reasons for that? If you manufacture, what are the opportunities and skill sets and capabilities of the Scottish manufacturing? We have organisations like the National Manufacturing Institute Scotland, ENMIS, who are looking at advanced manufacturing techniques. We have uh, the Higgs Centre for Innovation in Edinburgh, who does an ESA incubation centre there for companies, for startups that can grow. And they have lab space there where companies can product testing and evaluation and that kind of thing as well, which is really important for companies. So I think it's about understanding what assets and what skills we have mm. in Scotland already, but also understanding what we don't have. Bringing companies in to fill these supply chain challenges. My colleagues within Scottish Development International play a, a key part in that, understanding the companies that are in the space sector across the world and why they would be interested in coming to Scotland and kind of encouraging them to come here and telling the stories of why you would want to come and be part of the Scottish space sector. Where do you see, from your point of view, the biggest hurdles, not from the company's point of view, but from your point or as government? Where are the hurdles? I think there's a lot of competition across the globe in terms of where companies could set up. Scotland's a relatively young country that look from the space sector point of view. When you think space, you might not think Scotland, but I think we've now started to kind of let the world know what we're doing and why Scotland would be good. But with that, we're a small, agile nation. We're interconnected. The strategy that we talked about earlier, for example, that was developed in partnership with the Scottish government, Scottish academics and Scottish industry all working together. And Space Scotland, which is the industry body for space in Scotland, They have regular meetings which involves all stakeholders from all different areas across government, academia and industry. So we can work really closely together. A challenge, it's a global challenge, is skills. As the space sector grows, you have to have a think about skills. But there's some interesting programmes. We've got a lot of talent coming out of universities here. And I think that's the future of upskilling young people. And I think actually upskilling young people that there's lots of opportunities to work in the space sector, not necessarily in technical jobs as well marketing, you need business development people, you need finance, you need all these different areas. And there's jobs for you in the space sector that you don't have to be an astrophysicist or an astronaut or a mechanical engineer to work in the space sector. One of the things in Scotland that's been a bit of a secret almost, I think if you ask the general public what's going on in Scotland, they won't say space. I think we're starting to get there and people are starting to hear about it. 
And hopefully next year when we launch, there's a lot more in the media. So you're going to start to hear a lot. But I think skills is an important area and we need to make sure we invest in young people. And I think we're doing that here in Scotland. You know, there's a lot of opportunities for young people to get involved in the space sector. I'm happy that you don't say people are coming here for the weather. That's good. The classic weather comment, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it has to come. It always comes okay. up. <laughs> okay. Coming from Berlin, it's like sitting in a glass house. One of the challenges you also pointed to are talents. The global talent pool, we see this scarcity of talents, not just in the space sector, it's in all the high-tech sectors. And the question is how to inspire some students to do a career in the space sector when they're finished their study, because it's usually a very generic study. You can do anything out of that, but how to inspire them for the space sector. And when you said there was a new announcement of a new company coming here to Scotland, to Glasgow, creating 500 new jobs. So where shall these people come from? Because a space engineer, you don't grow within half a year from the universities. They need experience. They have to go on the big tour, potentially through the agencies, to other companies, then might come back and so on. But it's a process. We talk about a decade rather than a few months to build this knowledge. Or do we see a trend of cannibalizing this market by the talents already? So getting them from the established players that are there. It's an interesting question. I mean, there's a lot of talent that can be moved from other sectors into the space sector as well. I think there's a lot of demand, for example, on the downstream side for data analysts, mm -hmm. for web developers, for developers in general. And on the upstream side, a lot in engineering, there's, there is a lot of talent needed there when it comes to in various different guises of engineering as well. Yeah, I mean, there's always an element of competition between the companies in the sector for talent. That's always going to be the case, but there's other sectors here as well. An interesting example is the Space Hub Sutherland. Part of the reason why that was one of the spaceports that was chosen to be funded by the UK Space Agency is because they're decommissioning a power plant close by and there's going to be a lot of jobs and skills lost from that that can move in, potentially can move into the space sector. And a lot of these roles are transferable skills from one sector to another. Scotland already has a, quite a lot history of manufacturing. We've got history of engineering. We've got history of aerospace. There's a lot of skills already there within other sectors that can kind of help the space sector grow. I also think there's a lot of other companies. When we talk about the 130 companies who are in the space sector, those are the ones who are doing stuff in space now. There's a lot of companies in the, for the future that could be part of the space sector who are maybe currently doing stuff in defence or aerospace or manufacturing components for the marine industry that could actually be used in outer space. But they don't quite know where the opportunities lie at the moment. So I think there's a lot of opportunities for companies who don't sell into space to start selling into space. I also think there's a lot of opportunities for the data to be used in all these other sectors, as I mentioned earlier. I think we're only scratching the surface of how data can be used. But the skills challenge is a real challenge, but it's not just a space sector problem. And it's not just a Scottish problem, it's actually a worldwide issue. And what that comes down to is we need to invest more in young people, we need to invest more in university programmes. And that's something that's set out in the strategy, the Scottish Space Strategy and the UK Space Strategy, and something that's been looked at seriously here in Scotland. If you want to grow the sector, we need to invest in young people and let them come in with the skills that are needed. You mentioned one topic and that are the sectors that are not seeing space so far, machinery, agriculture, forestry, marine, fishery, and so on. So how do you get those people together? What are the tools you offer them to meet and greet, to exchange knowledge, to becoming aware of the services of the others or the needs of the others? I think a lot of it is networking and bringing people together. During COVID, there was a lot of stuff that was moved online and there was a lot of things there, but really you can't beat that one-to-one, -one bringing, putting people in a room and letting them thrash out ideas. There's various things that we're doing within Scotland to kind of try and address this. I think what it is, is connecting two sectors together. For example, in January, there's a FinTech Scotland and Space Scotland are running an event together to bring the two sectors together. So how can the financial services and FinTech industry benefit from space data and how can space data benefit from the financial services industry and where do they interlink? And actually, when you start to think about it, there's lots of things. When you do a transaction on your banking app, that goes through satellites. There's cybersecurity around about that as well. Blockchain technologies that are involved, that are crossovers between space yeah. and fintech. But there's also kind of out there things that you maybe not think about of how space could benefit the financial services sector. Green finance is becoming a big thing. Financial services industry want to know 
uh, the projects that they're investing in, are they actually green? Are they actually progressing? If you're putting money into a big construction project, is the actual work getting done that's said to be done? Earth observation and re remote sensing monitoring from satellites can help answer a lot of these questions. Mm. But again, I think you need to put the two sectors together. And the only way to do that, that's where sometimes the government and the agencies have to come in and do that because a lot of this stuff won't happen on their own. We have to be the cat. We have to drive it forward. We have to run these events and bring the sector together. And I should say that's the same internationally as well. In my role as a trade specialist, what I'm looking to do is try and connect companies in Scotland with opportunities overseas, basically take the capabilities of what we can do in Scotland and find an opportunity overseas. And again, a lot of those opportunities are cross-sectoral. Like you mentioned, how can we help companies in Scotland understand where their opportunities are across the globe? What I like to do is find a challenge and work backwards. For example, we were in Dubai at Expo 2020. We ran a space day out there. And one of the challenges that has happened in the UAE and in Dubai is that they import 80% of their food. So they've actually got a food security problem there. And that's partly because it's desert. It's really hard to grow food. Again, earth observation can be used to kind of help you understand the landscape, the land use, what is it getting used for? And there's interesting use cases out there, for example, monitoring in livestock and that you can use earth observation for that as well. So I think you need to find where are the challenges across the globe and where are the capabilities in Scotland and connect the two together. And if you can find that sweet spot, that's what we're really looking for. Last question. This year, 2022, was potentially very successful for you in terms of the growth of the sector, or the awareness the sector got. What can we expect next year? I think this has been... A launch. Yeah, launch next year is a big one. Yeah, okay. launch will... So there's a few things. I think this year has been probably the busiest year I can ever remember. I think that's because of COVID as well. There's been so many events, there's been so much happening that the world kind of opened up again. People have started travelling, networking and doing stuff. And that's great. But you still also need to have that thinking time to think about what are we actually trying to achieve and why. We launched our Scottish Space Strategy just over a year ago. We launched our Sustainable Space Roadmap a few months ago. And strategies are great, but really what you need to do is deliver under that. And it sets out what we're trying to achieve, but then you have to put programmes in place. Now we're starting to do a lot of that, but we need to get out there and explain to the world what we're doing and why. And we can't do this alone either. We want to work with international partners across the globe, especially when it comes to sustainability. For example, we really need to work with international partners on that front. So to me, the next year is going to be interesting for a number of reasons. We're, we're looking to push ahead and deliver against what we've said we're going to do within the strategy and within the roadmap. Launch is going to be a big thing. We're looking at vertical launch from Scotland, from both Saxa Ford, Spaceport on Shetland, and Space Hub Sutherland, which is in the most northern part of Scotland. Both of those are set to do vertical launches this year, which is really exciting. And I think what's interesting about that is that it completes the picture. When we talk about space in Scotland, we talk about end-to-end -end capability in small satellites. So we manufacture satellites here in Scotland. We soon will be able to launch them from Scotland with dedicated small satellite launch vehicles from dedicated small satellite launch sites. And then we can take the data and bring it back down to Earth and create applications around about that. That is the missing ingredients, the launch part. And it's really exciting. But I think launch is just a part of the puzzle. The upstream sector is all about getting the satellites up there. But really it's about what are the satellites doing and what is the point of all of that. And I think that's a really interesting part of it. The whole thing's quite exciting. I think with the launches next year, I think we'll, you'll start to hear a lot more about what Scotland's doing. Because that's the part where you'll get a lot of media attention when we start to launch. And we're hoping to be the first nation in Europe to launch from mainland Europe, which is really interesting. Of course, France launched already, but they launched from a site outside of mainland Europe. So, yeah, it's exciting times. I think the launches next year will be exciting. The sustainability stuff really excites me as well. We in Scotland are really trying to push forward and lead the way when it comes to space sustainability. And we don't want to just be a talking shop. Here's what we could do. We want to actually deliver some stuff. So there's been some exciting projects already happened. We had a funding call about a month ago, which was all about companies in Scotland who had ideas of how downstream data can be used for sustainability reasons. And we picked 12 companies from the applications and we're funding them to look at sustainability using space data. So that is a key output that, that's against the sustainability strategy. So more of this, to me, it's about, you can talk about how good we are when it comes to space and we can, strategies are one thing, but really we need to start delivering against them. And that's, I think that'll be the key thing that we'll see over the next year, hopefully. Thank you very much, Karen. What a great talk. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thanks, Torsten.
And if you want to stay on the pulse of the space industry, please visit our website at www.spacewatch.global and subscribe to our newsletters. And of course, don't forget to become a Space Watcher. I'm Thorsten Greening, publisher at spacewatch.global, your independent perspective on space. Thank you.